Joel Capante Olereya. Uh, I'm an economist and a conservationist and also a writer. Uh, well, I began to write in, basically I began to write in English. That is around uh, seven years ago. But from last year, I began to write in Ma. Ma is spoken in Kenya by the Maasai, the Samburu, and the Njems. And whereas uh, the Njems and the Samburu are, are only found in Kenya, Maasai are, found, are also found in Tanzania and some pockets of them in Malawi. Yeah, so they are spoken in, it is spoken in three countries okay. in Africa. Uh, honestly, because of the way the curriculum has been uh, structured, uh, like government policies are in English, mostly in English. But it can be applied, uh, our indigenous languages can be applied when there is need to d disseminate uh, a certain message or uh, uh, when you are doing public uh, participation or sensitization on anything like economics, I know that uh, indigenous languages come in. But mostly in most African countries, uh, because there is these languages which are called lingua franca, like Kiswahili, because we have, in Kenya we have the Maasai, we have the Samburu, we have the Duruma, the Kikuyus. So I think because we need a language that uh, if you want to pass a message, it goes, it has a bigger audience, everyone is going to get the message. Like uh, if you communicate in Kiswahili and English, then uh, it is, you achieve your target better. That's why there are na national languages in Kenya, Kiswahili and English. But indigenous languages are just as important. Okay. Absolutely, absolutely. People, uh, they begin, in Swahili they say, mtoto hutazama mgongo o mamake. That means that uh, a child that is carried in the back, uh, th that child is uh, closer first to the father, to the mother, then to the ma to the father, or even the house help, depend depending on the person who defines the child's immediate environment. So indigenous languages are best utilized and uh, the people are able to read other languages uh, well and learn them after they have learned first the indigenous languages. So that's why even when colonialists came to Kenya, they had to, trans they had to learn African languages so the, and even translated the Bible into those languages to pass messages across in an effective and efficient manner. Uh, well, I can say uh, there are a host of challenges. First, uh, there is no guidebook or there's no, there are no rules. You're beginning from scratch. It's not like English when you want to do a composition or a good story. Uh, you can look up for s the synonyms of a word in a dictionary. In this case, we are doing the first uh, probably the first short story in Ma translated from another language. So there are challenges because there, there are no rules. It has been, the workshop has been of uh, great use and great importance because we have, we have, uh, we have interacted with, uh, you know, I'm an economist and I'm, I've interacted with, uh, you know, big minds and great writers who have a lot of experience. So I have had a lot to learn. I have learned a lot and uh, just the fact of, of stressing that, you know, English is as good as Ma, English is as good as the Luo. That one only uh, is an, an, an inspiration. So we get inspired, we learn about uh, the basics of translation, what should you pass across to the next language, should you focus on the message, should you try to maintain the sentence in, in its original form without uh, losing the, me the intended meaning of the original writer. So we have a lot to learn along the way and uh, the workshop has been of great, great importance.